Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Denise, and I'm an AmeriCorps naturalist here at the Dorothy Pico Nature Center for the summer. Um, I have with me Scout, our American kestrel. He is part of the falcon family, and he is our newest addition to our animals that we have here. Um, we got him in February of this year, February 7th of 2020. Um, he is about a year old. He was brought to us by a SOARS member. SOARS uh, stands for Saving Our Avian Resources. And um, they are an organization that works on the rehabilitation of um, wild raptors and birds. So a SOARS member um, brought Scout to us um, as an injured fledgling. So he was really, really young um, when he got injured. We're not sure if he was hit by a car or what exactly caused the damage, but he does have a broken humerus. It is broken in two places. Um, the humerus is this bone that we have running from our shoulder to our elbow. And um, so like I said, it is broken in two places. So his wing permanently hangs lower. Um, I'm sure you can see it from your angle there. And um, so he cannot fly and he will not be able to um, be rehabilitated back into the wild. Uh, so we have him here and um, their lifespan in captivity can actually reach up to 17 years, but in the wild that usually only reaches up to about 11 years. And that is because when they are kept in captivity, they don't have to worry about predators. Uh, they don't have to worry about looking for food because they have a nice cozy home with us um, and they are given food and they are kept safe from those predators. Um, the American Kestrel, their status is actually um, of least concern as of right now. They are the most common falcon found in North America. Um, they actually do have a threat uh, uh, to pesticides. These guys do uh, tend to eat insects, things like grasshoppers and such. And so an overuse of pesticides can actually negatively impact um, the population of these American kestrels because it can um, harm and damage um, the health of these American kestrels that do eat those insects. So for their diet, um, their number one go-to is always going to be um, insects and other invertebrates um, that they might find flying around just because those prey to them is smaller. Um, it helps them catch, since they are a smaller raptor, um, it is probably an easier prey for them to get to. Uh, their second go-to is mice and maybe even other small birds. The American kestrel can also be known as the sparrow hawk, and that is because um, oftentimes they are seen catching sparrows as their meal. Um, and then occasionally you may find them eating frogs, snakes, or lizards, um, but that isn't as common because those animals usually are quite a bit uh, larger compared to mice and insects. Um, so it's a little harder for them to catch and carry um, their habitat. They actually really enjoy the short vegetation. Um, so maybe like the prairie grasses. Uh, they don't like a whole lot of trees, especially since they like to catch those insects like the grasshoppers and the mice. Um, the trees kind of cause a little too much coverage and it makes it a little difficult for them to find those insects. So they do like uh, those prairies, those meadows, grasslands and fields. Um, so that's usually where you'll find these guys in the wild. And they range all over North America, except for that northernmost part of Canada. And they are also actually found in Central and South America, but not Brazil. Um, and that northern range um, of these American kestrels, so like the northern um, part of the U.S., they do migrate because they aren't quite hardy enough to... Um, to be able to live through those colder temperatures. So uh, they will be migrating to the south if they do start to experience um, those colder temperatures. So um, I just wanna let you guys know right now that we will be feeding Scout today. Um, I know in the past we've been introducing our other raptors, but we haven't gotten a chance to show you guys um, their, their feeding habits um, because the two other raptors that we have are a little more shy when they do eat their meals. 
Um, our American Kestrel Scout, he is not shy usually. Um, he is totally okay with eating in front of us. So we thought it would be a really great opportunity to show you guys how um, raptors go about eating their food. But I just wanna let you guys know that he will be eating a mouse. Um, it is a dead mouse, but it can um, be a little more graphic than some people would expect. Um, similar to the snake, except uh, it's, a, it's a little different because raptors do use their talons and uh, their strong beak to pull apart their meal because they don't have um, hands to break it into pieces. So um, if it does make you uncomfortable, that is okay. And feel free to stop the video whenever you um, start to feel uncomfortable if it does make you uncomfortable. So I will go ahead and um, hand it over to Teresa here. She will do me the favor of putting him on the perch and then we will go ahead and get to feeding him. cannot get too far away because sometimes he forgets that he's not a very good at flying anymore and hopefully he will eat for us today so we're gonna try a mouse like Denise said no promises though a little closer look for you all. So um, the act of them jumping off a perch or when they're being handled and they jump off your hand, that is a term known as baiting. And that is an instinctual habit of these raptors. Um, they obviously, uh, their first instinct is to get away from a human. So if he does get startled, his first instinct will be to jump and to try to fly off. Um, but that is why we take uh, a lot of precaution when we are handling them. We always make sure that they have a jess um, tied to their legs and, along with a leash so that um, they can't fly too far and so that they don't hurt themselves. So we'll see if he can find that mouse, hopefully. Um, so a few things about uh, the difference of raptors versus um, other songbirds is that uh, the number one characteristic is that raptors have those strong grasping feet with those strong talons. Um, they do use those to catch their prey. Number two is that they have a hooked beak that helps them um, kill and rip apart their prey. Um, since they don't have hands, they can't um, exactly feed it to themselves, so they have to use their beak uh, to sort of break it into smaller pieces. Um, hopefully you guys can get a good look at that since he's so close. And then the number three, uh, the third characteristic of a raptor versus a songbird is that raptors' diets usually consist um, almost entirely of meat. So songbirds will usually be found eating seeds, um, which is why we have bird feeders around um, to help feed those songbirds. But raptors do usually catch their own prey. Um, those prey are usually, you know, anywhere from mice to other small animals uh, or rodents. Something else that you guys might be noticing is when he bobs his head, um, he may be moving his head up and down, side to side, or sometimes even in a circle. And that is um, a way that they focus their eyes and they can better determine how far away um, it is that they're looking at, whether it's uh, that they're looking at their prey or if they're looking at a possible threat. That act of bobbing will sort of help them triangulate and determine how far away it actually is um, because birds, especially owls, have very poor depth perception. So that is one way that they do help themselves focus. Um, another thing to mention is that squawking that we heard earlier. Um, there are different calls that birds use. Uh, the American Kestrel actually has a call, uh, a social call, and then a call also to warn off any threats. Um, and those two calls are actually fairly similar. So what we heard earlier, um, we aren't quite sure if that is a social call or a call to um, any threats, just because they're so similar. But um, that is a good glimpse to uh, the squawking noises that they do make. 
hopefully he'll uh, feel comfortable in us, enough to eat in front of us. Maybe. <laughs> Uh, another thing with handling raptors is actually um, we, we don't like to make a whole lot of direct eye contact with them, um, especially when we're holding them so close to us because they, we perch them on our hands. So especially when we're handling um, our red-tailed hawk, Scarlet, in our barred owl, Harlan, um, we do not like to make a lot of direct eye contact with them because that is seen as um, a threat. So we'll see if we can... Try again here. Maybe he's a little too nervous in front of us. When we do feed him, we um, always feed him in his enclosure. Uh, so this new environment might be why he's a little more skeptical of eating in front of us. Um, we do try to always keep their feeding spot the same um, so that they get used to you know, when they're being fed, where they're being fed, um, and especially to help them feel that they are safe and that there aren't going to be predators taking their food from them. So that might be a reason why um, he's a little more skeptical of eating in front of us today. He seems to be looking into the camera a lot. Um, I hope you guys can really see that beautiful color pattern that he's got, those blue steel colored wings. And he's got lots of speckles in his chest and all over his wings. Um, he's also got that copper, rusty orange um, along his back. And then um, one really cool thing that animals, especially smaller animals, like to or do, um, they have these colorations that often mimic eyes, especially on the backs of their head. So those round um, colored spots on the sides of his head uh, kind of mimic the same look of eyes. So if predators see that, they might um, be fooled and think that it is a larger animal. And um, a lot of times animals that do have these mimicked eyes, uh, those eyes will be on the back of their head so that predators that see them from behind will think that the animal has already spotted them and they will be less likely to attack. Other animals that do that are tigers. If you ever see a, a photo of a Bengal tiger on the backs of their ears, they do have those similar circle spots um, that somewhat look like eyes. Um, just to kind of help themselves uh, ward off other predators and seem larger to other animals. Well, I'm not sure if we're going to have much luck feeding him today, um, but if you do have an opportunity to come into the nature center, and um, if you do happen to come by when we are feeding the raptors, hopefully you guys can see that. Uh, that is one more reason for you guys to come out and visit our nature center here in Sioux City. Um, there are lots of other things that we have to offer um, both visually and um, to engage with physically. We have lots of uh, displays and lots of our other animals. Um, so you guys can come and check those out and we will always have information to give you guys so that you can learn a little bit more about what kind of wildlife we have around here in Iowa. It's been great having you guys. Um, I hope that you can stop by at the exhibit sometime soon and uh, say hi to our little buddy Scout. Thank you for joining us today.